Well, the pandemic surrounding the coronavirus continues to spread. The fear is mounting. The restrictions are tightening up. In fact, in the United States of America, where I live, the state of California is now on lockdown. 40 million people are not allowed to go about everyday life. They can only go out in the case of essential business. In Boise, Idaho, where I personally live, the restaurants are closed down for the next 30 days to dine in. It's carry out only. Everything has changed. And in our last video, we talked about, well, why are there diseases at all? Why are there diseases like the coronavirus? In this video, I want to ask and answer a really important question for those of us who are followers of Jesus. And that question is this, how should we respond? What should we do in the face of this sort of disruption, this sort of hardship or difficulty? Well, today, the day I'm recording this is actually my wife's birthday. I took her out to dinner a week ago because we could kind of sense what was coming. And so we thought before things get really bad, let's go out to dinner for your birthday, even though it's a week early. Proves to have been the right choice since currently we're not even able to go out to dinner because the restaurants are closed down. And on that night that I took her out to dinner, our waiter was talking with us. The restaurant was actually fairly empty when we arrived. It did fill up slowly over the course of the evening, but he was already talking about noticing a slowdown, impacting his income, and well, as of today, he's now without work. I don't know how that particular restaurant is um, helping out their employees, but he's suffering. There's some difficult times ahead for him because there's a good chance he's losing money and how is he going to pay for his bills and as we were chatting with our waiter and he was just mentioning what he kind of anticipated was going to happen and some of the difficulty that would arise from that I told him a story about when I went to visit Haiti and do a pastor's conference and it was just a year after the massive earthquake that uh, really devastated the city of Port-au-Prince in Haiti. People were still living in tents. Homes were still uh, just destroyed. Buildings were in ruins. The particular part of Haiti I was in was a missions complex. There were 120 kids on this mission complex, 80 pastors or 90 pastors there for this missions conference, a medical team that was doing some medical missions plus the staff. So there was close to 250, 300 people on the mission station while I was there. The city decided that they were going to just cut the water main when they were repairing the road because it was easier to cut the water main than work around the water main. So we didn't have running water for a number of days while we were there with all these people in the complex. No showers, no flushing toilets, difficult times. And one of our interpreters there in Haiti said to us, thanks for coming and doing misery with us. So I, I'm telling this to the waiter at the restaurant and he nods his head and he smiles. Yeah, we're going to be okay, right? And it's like, yeah, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And what struck me as I reflected on my Haiti experience, on church history, and all of this is that Christians have routinely gone into difficult places and done misery with people. They have been there to be a force for good in the midst of difficulty. And that's actually what Jesus called us to do and invited us to do. And the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 Shortly after Jesus really sets up the whole message he wants to declare in that sermon, Jesus says this. He says, in the same way, let your light shine before people that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Did you catch that? That our, our basic responsibility in this world is to be people who do good deeds and in such a way we're a light to this world and we bring honor to God by doing good deeds. And oftentimes we think of doing good deeds as purely just being you know, morally upright people. And certainly it includes that. We should be morally upright people, people who act with integrity and are known for being morally decent folk. But it goes beyond that. This idea of your good deeds has to do with deeds that are helpful, that are beneficial, that are good for people, good for your neighbors, good for the community, good for society. In fact, uh, the Apostle Peter he really had learned this lesson from Jesus so well that in his first letter that he wrote, the letter of 1 Peter, um, he's dealing with Christians who are suffering all sorts of difficulties, some of which is because specifically for their faith in Jesus. So they're experiencing hardship, opposition, um, social disruption. They're maybe losing some income over their jobs. And Peter's words to them are this. That he, he says, you should, in the midst of these sufferings, entrust yourself to a faithful creator. Catch that. Entrust yourself to your faithful creator, your creator who will take care of you, who loves you, who knows your needs. So entrust yourself to your faithful creator 
and continue to do good. In fact, that idea of doing good is really peppered throughout the letter of 1 Peter because that's one of the major things Christians should be known for. When life gets hard, Christians should be the most known for doing good. And in fact, historically, they have been. In fact, a very early kind of dramatic example of that in church history came about 200, 250 years after the life of Jesus. There was a massive pandemic, a great plague that swept through the Roman Empire, one of the worst plagues in recorded history. Um, in fact, at one point, according to the records, it's estimated that about 5,000 people a day were dying in the city of Rome. Not just getting sick, they were dying in the city of Rome. The general populace was just so fear-stricken that as soon as somebody showed symptoms, they would just put them out in the street, leave them to die. Close family members just putting out their, their loved ones into the street, leaving them to die because they, they themselves didn't want to get sick and die. And what did the Christians do? The exact opposite. Instead of running from the pandemic, they ran to the pandemic and they were the ones that cared for their neighbors. They did good. They entrusted themselves to their faithful creator and they continued to do good in town. And they were known for being those who did good, just like Jesus said and just like Peter said. In fact, let me read you these words from an eyewitness. These are from a bishop during that time period describing what the Christians did. Listen to these words. It says this, most of our uh, beloved brother Christians showing unbounded love and loyalty, never sparing themselves and thinking only of one another, heedless of the danger, they took charge of the sick, attending to their every need and ministering to them in the name of Christ. And with them, they departed this life serenely happy because they were infected by others with the disease, drawing onto themselves the sickness of their neighbors and cheerfully accepting the pains. The Christians just began to gather up the sick and began to care for them and to begin to minister to the needs. They themselves got sick and they themselves also died, but they did good in town and they cared for their neighbors. And that should be our basic fundamental response. We entrust ourselves to God and we do good. Um, we let our light shine before people in such a way that they see our kind-hearted, benevolent, generous, good deeds. And it brings honor and glory to God. In fact, I've seen just reports of this on social media. I've heard it through the news. I've heard various reports of still to this day in the midst of this difficulty, Christians doing good. And, and that's our responsibility. In fact, here locally in town, a friend of mine just decided, you know what, she needed to do something to help these kids who were now going to be home from school and weren't going to have necessarily school lunches, many of whom who were going to go hungry because their parents were working and, or their parents were poor. And so she just, she just decided that she was going to help out by making sack lunches for kids. And so she announced that she was going to do that uh, sim very simply on social media. And her Venmo account started blowing up as people started sending her money. And the whole project grew bigger than she anticipated. And now she, in partnership with others from her church, are doing good by giving sack lunches to hungry kids. That's the Christian response in times of difficulty. When life gets hard, Christians are known for doing good. And so in the midst of the disruption of our lives, as really minor as it could be compared to maybe the difficulties our Haitian friends and brothers experience um, in the poverty of their country, or as certainly um, not as disruptive as what was going on in the city of Rome 2,000 years ago. And yet our lives are disrupted and things are getting hard. People have experienced great loss and there is turmoil. There's going to be financial repercussions for months, perhaps years for some people. Some jobs might even close down. This is going to be a big deal and there is real suffering. And in the midst of all that, my brothers and sisters, let's be known for doing good. Let's let our light shine before people in such a way that they may see our generous, kind-hearted, cheerful, loving good deeds and glorify our Father in heaven. Hey, thanks for tuning in to this Bible and Life video. My name is John Whitaker, and let's do this again soon.